Okay, so what we'll need to do is set up a hot, hot plate on the jack. And again, the idea of the jack is that we could lower it anytime we need to remove the reaction mixture from, in this case, our water bath. All right, so we're gonna, um, I filled it, the stainless steel bowl with water. And what we're gonna do is heat the water to around the boiling temperature. And we're gonna gently stir the reaction mixture once we place it on our 50 milliliter flask we'll go ahead and clamp it right there and let it sit within the water bath right so i'm gonna take a minute to go away pour aminophenol and while we do that we'll go ahead um, and turn on the hot plate Aminophenol is one of our two sourcing material. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weigh around three grams. I'm gonna use the weighing paper. Okay, so the experiment calls for using acidic and hydride as one of our two reagents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a transfer pipette, a disposable transfer pipette to measure out 3.5 milliliters of acidic and hydride. You know, what I'm going to do is go ahead and dissolve the reaction mixture in water. We need eight milliliter of deionized water. I could use the same graduated cylinder since I'm adding water to the same reaction mixture. And what you have in the fume hose is the bottle of DI water. Go ahead and fill it to about eight milliliters. If you were in the lab touching the flask, the flask is actually warm to the touch, which tells you the reaction is what, exothermic or endothermic, if heat is being released. The reaction is exothermic. All right. So now what we'll need to do is put it um, in the hot water bath by really clamping it on the clamp, and we're gonna add this stir bar to gently stir it. Okay, so now I could take the flask and clamp it. And what you want to do at this point is to definitely lower the jack so you're away from the hot water as far as possible. And again, that clamp is gonna hold it right at the neck of the flask. Okay. And then what you do is you lift the jack back up Notice the color of the reaction mixture. All right, again, what we have here is eight milliliter of DI water, our solvent, and then we have our two starting material, acidic and hydride, and four amino phenol. Think about the mechanism. Think about what is this, you know, the limiting reactant. Okay, so now once I've let it sit in the hot water bath for about five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat source as well as lower the jack. Okay. Basically removing it from the heat source. Notice the stir bar is still on, so it turns it off right now. So what I'll do is I'll take another stir bar and I'll use that, uh, just a regular stir bar, and I'll use that to remove the stir bar that's in solution. Okay, now that we've allowed it to cool for some time, I'm gonna take it out and see, and I'll go ahead and place it on the bench top. 
and then once it reaches room temperature I'll go ahead and put it on the ice bath All right if you take a look you can already see the formation of the crystals right or the products Once it reaches room temperature, we'll place it right on the ice bath. Okay, so keep in mind the reaction is, or the formation of the crystals or the product is in equilibrium. So you wanna make sure you allow it to form the product slowly. So now that it's, it has reached room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and take the flask and place it in an ice bath. set up um, the suction filtration we'll need the three arm or the side arm flask does it cleanse it well and I'll put the rubber support and then I'll have the two pieces for the flush in our funnel finally I'll need to To hold the flask when you insert the thick rubber tube, right? And you're gonna pre-weigh a filter paper, or you can also pre-weigh the top part of the Buschner funnel along with the filter paper. But this time, I only weighed the filter paper itself. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and clamp it right into the vacuum. Okay, by washing the product with two 3 milliliter portions of cold DI water, we ensure that any remaining acidic anhydride that hasn't been reacted gets washed away as well. Alright, we're allowing the crude product to air dry under a vacuum, and then we'll measure the weight of the crude product. Okay, so before recrystallizing the crude product, which has a slightly um, a tint of a pink color, what we'll do is um, place some of the crude product in a capillary melting point tube so that later we can characterize it. And all we need to do is really gently tap the capillary tube into the product until it fills about two to three millimeters. And then we'll place it in this hollow tube to allow the product to move from one end of the capillary tube to the other. We're gonna be using 50% methanol in water as our recrystallization solvent. You can go ahead and heat it up. Okay, so now it's time to recrystallize the crude product. So what I'll do is take the crude product and place it in a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. We're gonna use a minimum amount of hot recrystallization solvent. It'll take about three milliliter of the recrystallization solvent per one gram of the crude product for this specific experiment, right? But it could vary slightly so it's important to keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're gonna allow it to cool down on the bench top.
so now that we've plotted on ice for some time, if you take a look, we do have our recrystallized product. Okay, so next we'll be vacuum filtering the product and washing it with a few um, brushes of cold DI water. product will allow it to air dry under a vacuum for about 15 minutes. Okay, so for our TLC um, solvent, what we're going to use is ethyl acetate. Two drops of concentrated ammonium hydroxide right? and it's actually in a dropper so one two then we'll place the solvent in a beaker and you can swirl it to mix and place the glass top on top. Notice this is a concentrated solution of ammonium hydroxide, so you would need to take care not to breathe it in. I've placed a few crystals of the recrystallized acetaminophen in acetone, and I will use that to spot the product. 